Hello everybody, Janie Goddard here and today we're covering a very interesting, very important topic. Um, I just want to welcome you all because what we're talking about today is communication and communicating is absolutely crucial when it comes to growing your practice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let a few more people in and there we go, lovely. That's it. I'm not joined by my glamorous assistant today, so I might need to just hop off and go and let people in as they arrive. So what I'm going to do is just organize this screen here. Right. OK. So, yeah. So so as I say, what we're covering today is communication. Now, I'd like to give you some background to this, a couple of pieces of background, if I may. The first piece of background is that um, when I did my master's, my MSc, um, I did it in homeopathy, but you obviously, being a, a master at MSc, a master of science, you have to do a research project. And uh, it has to be obviously research, properly research-based. You have to have a proper methodology and a proper sort of analysis and uh, ask a question and hopefully come out with some sort of an answer. And Something in my role as president of the Complementary Medical Association that has always fascinated me, deeply fascinated me, is that some practitioners absolutely thrive personally and professionally in this field, while the majority of people really do struggle. Um, it can be very, very hard to build a practice or a training school. And I know that we've got people joining us today who do both. Um, some, some of you run a practice some of you run a training school and some of you do both. And actually, I know we've got a couple of people joining us in a little bit who actually run retreats as well. But actually, the fundamentals are the same. The fundamentals of business growth are all the same regardless. And what I looked at with my study was that I made it global in scope and I'm more than happy to send you the dissertation if you would like to see it if you need some some bedtime reading that uh, will really really send you off to the land of Maud. Um, you know what academic writing is like it's it's very dry uh, but you, you have to be dry you have to get the point across but what um what what I did was I asked uh, various practitioners all around the world from various disciplines whether they would be prepared to take part in an interview whereby I was asking them about how the practices were going, were they successful, were they growing, was it stagnant, were they losing people, what steps did, have they taken to grow things. So to try to get an idea, an inkling as to what it was that we could tease out, what information we could tease out that would actually help us to come to an understanding of if we could bottle one aspect of that practice, that success, that recipe for success, what would it be? Um, it's a huge topic and it was obviously confounded by different people in different countries, different disciplines, different business models, because obviously an acupuncturist has a very different business model to say a homeopath. So a homeopath, you know, you'll see somebody, you ideally prescribe the similimum, the, the perfect remedy that matches all of those symptoms. And Ideally, the patient gets well and, and goes off into the wild blue yonder and may come back in six months time for a, a, an adjustment or top up or what have you. Um, but obviously, somebody, let's say, doing acupuncture has a slightly different business model in so far as what will happen, I'm going to let some more people in, what will happen is that they will tend to maybe have a series of treatments. So it's a much easier business model. Nevertheless, I, I figured there must be some, shall we say, common denominator that underlies the success patterns in all of these different approaches to complementary medical business. And obviously, you know, there are some people running colleges and, and some people are running really ridiculously successful training schools and colleges, and yet other people are struggling. So again, what's going on? So after all this singing and dancing and after all this said and done, the thing that it all boils down to that makes the big difference is communication. And I know that sounds really blooming obvious now that I say it, but you know, it was interesting because with the, uh, with the research I did, I, had, I did what was called a grounded theory methodology. And a grounded theory methodology is a social science approach that enables you to look at the words that people are saying. 
and then analyze them and tease out repeated sentences so that themes start to sort of evolve and you start to see the patterns so for me as a homeopath you know we deal in patterns and I'm sure you do it you, with, with your different disciplines you deal in patterns all the time I love patterns I'm a pattern person so this whole methodology of pattern recognition was really you know it's it great as far as I was concerned and as I say you know my various things come up but as I say it's the the communication it was those people that were going out and communicating about what they did who were being successful so the first thing I really want to say is that have a good think. If I can give you a checklist, I mean, a lot of this session today is going to be kind of like a checklist thing, do this, do this, do this, uh, because there are certain you know, things I would love you to do sort of by way of homework. But the first thing I would really love you to do is to have a think about how do you communicate? Do you go out and give talks? Do you communicate online? Um, if so, how effective is that? How much bang for your buck are you getting? Are you getting a return on your investment of time, effort, money, all of those things? Are you communicating via brochures? Are you communicating via your website? If so, how? Are you putting video on your website? Are you utilizing YouTube? Are you utilizing things like Facebook Lives? What I'd love you to do, if you don't mind, I'm going to pop the uh, chat on and uh, if you don't mind I'm just going to go quiet for a little bit and if you wouldn't mind in the chat box telling me about the different types of communication you do um, I would absolutely love that because it would give me a really good overview as to what you're doing at the moment and areas that we can actually look at and really investigate so whilst you do that for me um, I would uh, just love to obviously look at who's in the group Antonia, Dane, uh, Jane Pearl, Jill Suarez, Kerry Ann, uh, Marie Jarrett, um, NH, um, I don't know who that is, but anyway, I'm sure it's somebody I know. Uh, Paula Finnegan, Sally Calder, Tony Gordon, thank you so much. We've got some new people, and we've also, of course, got some existing people who've been, I think, Jill, I think you've not missed one actually all year, in fact, the last 18 months. Um, so, yeah, you know, that's uh, absolutely fantastic to see you again, Jill. So, yeah, so has anybody got any thoughts about the way that you communicate? If you can drop that into the, uh, into the chat box for me. Carrie Ann, thank you. Um, you did regular Facebook Lives during lockdown and got a great ROI return on investment from those with six new clients. That's absolutely fantastic. That's really amazing. Carrie Ann, can I ask you, when you were doing your Facebook Lives, how did you promote those? Did you just put them in a group or did you put them on your main page? Um, how did you actually let people know that you were doing those Facebook Lives? Um, did you sort of, you know, did you wing it or was there a strategy there? I'd love to know. And anybody else, please, you know, if you've got any sort of uh, nuggets or pearls of wisdom uh, regarding how you've communicated about your practice, uh, let me know in the chat. Or if you aren't communicating and you're not sure how you would, let me know that in the chat as well, because I do want this session to be interactive if, as, you know, if it possibly can be. I'm going to have a quick sip of my drink and then I'll tell you about my about my hand in just a second. Ah, Carrie Ann, thank you very much. Um, Carrie Ann says she created an event on my Facebook page and promoted them on my page. Brilliant. Now, it's very interesting. I don't know if you've tried to do the same thing recently and whether you're getting the same sort of exposure via Facebook. We are going to talk about the pros and cons of, of different uh, face, you know, sorry, different social media platforms, obviously, because, you know, that that is something really important and really germane to this discussion. What we've noticed about um, things like our Facebook lives, we've got various groups, we've got the CMA group, I've got my uh, Rewind Your Body Clock group, um, and I've also got um, the Jamie Goddard Masterclasses, which is the business development group. Um, and we noticed that Initially, at the start of lockdown, we could do a um, 
a sort of a you know heads up to everybody and, and and set up an event and we would get quite good coverage but we noticed then that facebook started to throttle it back because of course their business model is that you pay them for advertising and we didn't really want to do that uh, because it's very difficult for us to hit our demographic um, because obviously um, facebook is a um Facebook is very much a consumer platform. So it's all right for you because if you are going out to people who need your services, consumers, you will be able to find them on Facebook. So you would be able to successfully run Facebook ads. For us as the Complementary Medical Association, the reason we don't use Facebook ads is because we are, if you like, business to business. So we are talking to you or as you know, you are business people. So you are our target market, so to speak, if that makes any sense. It sounds so cold to say it like that. But you know, our role is to look after you as professionals, if you like. So that hopefully sounds a bit more human, humane even. So, uh, you know, obviously through, through uh, Facebook, we can't actually target um, our ads to go to businesses because that's not what Facebook is. LinkedIn is a better platform for us. So I hope that sort of starts to clarify things a little bit. Um, but yeah, that is absolutely, that's fantastic, Carrie Ann. Thank you. Marie says, hi everybody, I'm pretty new here. So dipping my toe in, into Instagram. That's really interesting, Marie. Have you actually had much uh, response via Instagram? Let me know, because I'm very interested. Um, I'm finding personally, for, so obviously I'm here with two hats on. I'm here with my Obviously, as you can see, my lovely CMA T-shirt, I'm here with my CMA hat on, but I'm also here to share my experience as a sort of from my own, from the Jamie Goddard brand. So just so you know, when I'm working with my, my patients, um, I tend to work with people with women who are facing burnout, executive women facing burnout in a nutshell. That's my elevator speech. But also, of course, I've got a massive amount of people I look after uh, with autoimmune illnesses, because of course, you know, you know me and my array of autoimmune stuff going on. In fact, if it's not gonna to be too off-putting, I luckily today, I was just told I could stop using my splint. Four weeks ago, I had a full hand reconstruction. So I don't know if you can see that it's not too gross and I'm not going to get too close to the camera. So today's my first day out of the splint and it feels really weird and really vulnerable. But um, I have the most amazing surgeon who's who did a surgery to completely reconstruct my hand. Um, the surgery isn't you can't even find it, this kind of surgery online. Prior to the surgery, I was trying to Google it to see. So what is he actually going to do to my hand? You can't even find it. This is he's literally it's bespoke. He's, he's the leading hand plastic surgeon in the country. So if somebody says, have you had plastic surgery? I now have to say, yeah, I have. <laughs> Nothing else, because I'm not a candidate for it with all with RA and everything else. But yeah, um, so he actually has done a unique surgery um, at uh, the Queen Victoria in East Grinstead, which is the country's leading reconstruction place. Um, and honestly, he's worked an absolute miracle. I have, I can't believe what this man has done. So um, yeah, it's been a really tough four weeks. Um, it knocked me for six energetically, uh, but I have to say, I, I'm just over the moon with this. But the only reason I'm telling that is because obviously I look after people with autoimmune conditions because, you know, we practice best in our practices um what we most know about don't we and um, it's why i always say you know you are the expert in what you do because you know you've been through it and nine times out of ten you'll be working with people who need to know you know sort of that you have this expertise and they need to know what you know and you are the expert because you've been through it you've lived it you live it eat it breathe it you know so um so anyway welcome we i'm really thrilled to see you here and it's really fabulous antonia hi lovely antonia um my business is just launching, Antonia says, uh, but I plan to communicate via e-newsletters, Instagram, Facebook to start with. Yes, uh, would love to move to videos eventually, but need to increase confidence first. Glad you said that. Over on uh, YouTube, go and look for the Complementary Medical Association. Don't put in the CMA because you won't get to the right place. Go over there, put in complimentary, spelling complimentary right, not with an I, Complementary Medical Association, and it'll take you to the CMA uh, 
YouTube channel. And on that, I have actually got a couple of videos for you. One is how to set up your, uh, your studio. So I'm gonna flip my camera around a bit. You can see I've got my green screen. You can see my, my office and you can see, start to see hopefully things like all my lighting and all, you see more lighting there. You'll see, uh, la, la, la. you see how the green screen works and you'll see more lighting there. In fact, um, what I can do, I will, so you can see this looks fantastic behind me. It doesn't look like a real lovely office. Let me show you what I'm doing here. I'll hide my hand because I just realized that looked really gross. And what I'm gonna do is go into video settings and I'm going to switch off my green screen so you can see that. So I wanna show you how magical you can make things. Um, right, okay, let me go into video, video, there we go. Okay. Let me go into advanced for you. No, that's not where it is. Uh, la, 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 la. Right. Okay, that's weird. That's not okay though. Let me just come back out of there. I just want to see if I can show this to you because I find this absolutely fascinating. Uh, video settings, I think that's it. Right, okay. No, do you know something? It's not going to let me do it whilst I'm, uh, it's because I'm broadcasting. That's what it is. Um, well, I will, I promise you, uh, next time, and I, I know I've shown you in on the CMA YouTube channel, I've actually sort of stood over to the side of the office and I've actually shown you the exact setup and where your, your camera or your, your computer goes and how to position the lights and so on. And truth be told, you don't have to have a whole array of lights. I just do so much video and I do an awful lot of um, television as well. So I can broadcast, do broadcast quality TV from this um, office slash studio anyway. Um, so that's the only reason I've got this whole array of lights and a proper full on green screen. But actually you can get away with just a simple 18 inch ring light so I show you that and also the other video over there is how to be confident on camera um, so go and watch both of those because I think they'll be really really useful for you um, that is lovely and um, so yeah and um, you're communicating via newsletters excellent Instagram Facebook yeah and um, all of those are great now ultimately what I would say to all of you um, and I wanted to come on to that a little bit later, but I want to park it here just for the time being. Um, social media can be incredibly labor intensive um, and you can find yourself just going down a great big black hole, um, you know, spending a lot of time and effort and money on social media, uh, particularly if you're going into adverts. Um, but the most important thing is to work out where your audience hangs out. So for the CMA, for example, it's not Instagram. We don't even have an Instagram page because again, Instagram is very, it's very visual. It's very pictorial, of course. That's the whole point of it. It is video driven as well, but it's very much sort of putting pictures up. Now, the person that does Instagram completely brilliantly, go and check out Maison de Lunel. Um, Ross will be joining us. Ross may even have joined us already. She's a wonderful lady in France. Let me just have a little look. Uh, no, Ross isn't with us yet. Ross's, um, her, her Instagram is Maison, M-A-S-O-N-D-E-Lunel, -E L-U-N-E-L. Go take a look at her Insta because she's promoting her retreats. And she does Instagram brilliantly. And I've watched her growth trajectory. It's been incredible. She runs challenges as well. Now, I ran a challenge for my, uh, my stuff, 21 day rewind plan that I, I did in April, right at the beginning of April. And Ross actually sent me her template for running a, um, you know, ru running a, a, um, a challenge. And challenges can be really good. You can do them on Insta, you can do them on Facebook and so on. It's all about communication. So um, when you run a challenge, you'll get lots of people involved and very excited. You must maintain your challenge though. If you're doing a challenge, you've got to keep it going, come hell or high water every single day for the duration of your challenge. Maybe start small. I mean, for me, 21 day rewind challenge, 
was only because in my book, in Rewind Your Body Clock, I've got a 21 day rewind plan. So I rashly, for my first ever challenge, did a 21 day challenge. Yeah, it worked really well. I got a ton more followers and I got a lot of, in, uh, of engagement. But you know what? It was really, really hard work. Um, and so I would say it starts small, but Ross may well be able to share some ideas. So she's a wonderful lady. She's ever so friendly. So I would suggest um, contacting her um, and uh, also check out her retreats as well, uh, because she's just, you know, what she does is, is superb. And um, Jill, I know that you run retreats. I don't know if you've got retreats at the moment. Uh, Jill, can you give me a yay or nay? Are you doing retreats at the moment at all? Not at the moment, no, okay. Planning to do more? Maybe later. Right. We know it's free to travel. Yes, of course, absolutely. But your retreats are amazing. I mean, I know that you've had the most incredible retreats uh, that anybody would be more than happy to come to. So, yeah, I, you know, all of these things are so, so wonderful, but obviously hampered at the moment. Um, so coming back to uh, the, the, the points that you're making. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I think everything you're doing there, Antonia, is fantastic. But make sure that your people, that you're not spreading yourself too thin um, as far as the different platforms that you use. Make sure that your audience is hanging out on the platforms that you're using. If they are, excellent, go for it, okay. Um, now, let's have a look, oh yes, okay. Carrie ann says, kept to the same time and day every week. Oh, well done, big kiss to you, Carrie ann uh, Absolutely, consistency is king. When it comes to communication, social media or wherever, Consistency is king, keeping it same time, same place, week in, week out. People do get used to that. It's a bit like these tutorials. You know, we had a couple of weeks off because actually I'd just had my surgery and it completely knocked me for six. Uh, but obviously we're back in the saddle now again. And, um, you know, we have found within the CMA, and I'm not, not worried about sharing this information with you at all, from the beginning of lockdown, through to December of 2020, the end of December 2020, the CMA grew by 96%. And it's because we were doing these tutorials in and week in, week out, getting some fantastic guests on. So again, all about communication in a really reliable way, you know, same time, same place, weekly. Um, and of course, making sure that we recorded them and making sure people knew that we, if they couldn't make the time, that it would be up on, this, on the uh, Complementary Medical Association YouTube channel. So people were accustomed to looking out for them. And also a lot of course of what we did was reporting back to you about what we were doing in sort of engaging the governments across the UK in and actually really getting, you know, we were obviously instrumental in getting that law changed so you could go back to work. So again, consistency, absolutely carry on. Thank you for, for flagging that up. It's so important and it does grow. Um, for example, on my YouTube channel, my, my YouTube channel, not, not the Complementary Medical Association one, I actually have on my header, I have, it says new videos every Thursday, and I do, I put new videos up every Thursday, come hell or high water, because people expect it. And my channel has grown massively, it's grown really, really quickly. And again, it's about understanding your audience, understanding what they most need to know. Now, my next strategy, and you might want to maybe try to, to replicate this, um, it's a strategy that's been pioneered by um, Dr. Michael Clapper. And I know, Jill, obviously you know him, and I'm sure others will, will know Dr. Michael Clapper. Um, I think some of you will have seen Michael's very, very quick five-minute videos daily. And what he's doing is that he's, um, it's a split screen. His assistant is going through his post book, post box and saying, oh, this is the question we've had today, Michael. What do you think about whether or not salt is good for you? Or should I have a glass of red wine every evening? Or um, what do you think about fruit, Michael? Is it good or is it bad? You know, all of those sorts of questions that everybody asks, you know, the sorts of questions that people ask you as practitioners, all of you. So maybe take some time, write down those questions that you get asked on a regular basis, because believe you me, if, if one person's asked a question, there'll be a gazillion of other people out there wanting to know the answer to that question. And you can actually just go live, whether Facebook, YouTube, or what have you, just go live and answer those questions. And 
I'll tell you something, the transformation with doing video really happens when you're not doing it for yourself because you're trying to grow your following or what have you. But when you do that reframe, which is that you're doing it because the information you're putting out is actually really going to help people. That's when you get confident on camera. I know that sounds really weird, but so let me again take you back to February 2020. Uh, January, February 2020, um, I was faffing around, I'll be honest with you, faffing with Blooming Social, with, with going live on video. I'd done quite a few, um, I'd done quite a few YouTube videos. And the way I was taught to do them was that what you have to do is you do your YouTube video, then you have to send it off to an editing company and then they put all these fancy things and they do all these cuts and then they have these end things and blah, blah. And I was spending, I was personally out of my own pocket spending about 250 to 500 pounds a month, which is not really a, a good use of money at all, um, you know, for the, for the return that I was getting. And so, Obviously, then March hit, and we were looking at the we were looking at complementary medicine. We were looking at the CMA, and and I was feeling I, you know before before you know that I was doing these videos. I was feeling really insecure on video. I was feeling just awful and like oh well I don't look very good. I'm umming and ahhing. I'm not a very fluent you know communicator, and I was just really beating myself up about the whole thing. I was being really shy, and I didn't enjoy it at all. I hated it, and the pressure of having to constantly go live, you know, every Thursday it was just really ghastly, and I was really not enjoying it. As I say, COVID then hit. We looked at what was going on, and we thought, oh my god our members are going to lose their businesses. If people can't come and see our members, then they're going to go out of business. So that was the rocket that we needed, our proverbial backsides, to go, what the heck are we going to do? Okay, right, we're going to go live every Friday. We're going to give people information they need, how to pivot your business online, how to do all your PPE, uh, PPE how, what the government's saying, what your insurance needs to do, can you be insured for online? Can you do this? All the things that we did, you know, how to find your avatar, how to find your niche, how to do this, how to do that. And so basically, um, you know, it wasn't a case of being about me at all. It was about, we've got to get this information out there. We've got, you know, people are really struggling. That's what we've got to do. Um, and that was it. One, as soon as we took away the uh, sort of the ego, if you like, um, not that I was coming from an egotistic place with my videos, but what I mean about ego is that it was me getting in my own way, my head going, you know, you're not really very good at these videos. You're not very good at video. Maybe you shouldn't do it. You know, oh, it's a bit rubbish. Everybody else is so much better than you comparing, you know, all of the stuff that we all do. If you actually start to communicate what you know that people need to know because it will transform their lives, potentially save lives, then you can just get on video and you don't care if you look as though you've got two heads because quite frankly, it doesn't matter because the information, you're confident about the information you're putting out and therefore, and that's it. And that's the trick to doing video and being confident. Nothing, not, no, you know, you don't need magical filters. You don't need anything else other than a why. Go back and watch Simon Sinek's video. What is your, what is my why? What is your why? Go back, it's, it's the most uh, popular, I believe still the most popular YouTube video ever go back and find out because if you drill down to your why, why you're doing this, the rest is easy. Truly, the rest is easy. Okay, so that's my, there ended the sermon on, on how to be confident on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, making sure as Kerry ann rightly says, kept to the same, same time and day every week. Absolutely. Hi, Tony. Hello, lovely. You're here all the time. Thank you for, for being so regular with us. Uh, Tony starting to use Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and more recently Twitter. Brilliant. How's that working for you, Tony? Let me know. I'd love to know how you're getting on with all of this. Are you seeing that a particular platform is working better for you than others? Um, which gives you the best bang for your buck? I'd, I'd love to know what your thoughts are about that. And Antonia says it all sounds great. Thank you. Brilliant. OK, that's absolutely super. Thank you. Um, you know, it's such a lovely, it's a great group, actually. And I think, you know, we can be really interactive today. So this is fabulous. I love this kind of thing. Um, so. 
Um, yeah, so what I said we would do is we were talking about the pros and cons of various social media platforms, what works, what doesn't. As I say, actually, you know, I love YouTube because it is actually the second biggest search engine. So people are going, instead of just going to Google and Googling something, they're actually now going to YouTube. Uh, so sort of how do I, it, YouTube is fantastic for how to, you know, how do I lose weight? How do I uh, get rid of my eczema? How do I sleep better? How do I um, relax? Um, how do I meditate? You know, it, it's a lot of those sorts of things. So if you can start to make videos about, you know, how to do things, that is going to stand you in really, really good stead. Now, remembering the structure, and I did want to talk to you about the structure of presentations because it's absolutely crucial. Now, this structure, um, particularly for YouTube videos and, and, and also, of course, Facebook Lives, right at the very top, um, you do need to introduce yourself and talk a little bit, very, 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 very briefly about why people should listen to you. Okay, so, uh, for example, um, if I was doing something on rheumatoid arthritis, I'd say, hi, thank you for joining me. I'm Janie Goddard, and um, I work with people suffering from rheumatoid arthritis. And the reason I do that is because I know exactly what it's all about, because, hey, look, you know, I've got RA2. So I'm in full remission now. This is how I got there. And people are going to go, wow, OK, she knows what I'm going through. So that's the thing to do is to go and look at my avatar videos, go and look at my niche videos, just to make sure you are targeting your communications in the right way so that you understand your audience. If you really deeply understand your audience, you're going to be able to target your messaging. That's the, it's so crucial that you do that um, and that you get that, you know, you get it, get it right. OK, and introduce yourself. But you've got to make sure that's really brief because the research at the moment shows that people are consuming shorter videos. It used to be that a 20 minute video was the sweet spot, not anymore. Uh, with my, my 20 minute videos, I've got probably about 10K or so, 13K views on most of my 20 minute videos. But what I'm noticing is that people are binging the short videos, the two minutes, the five minutes and so on. And I don't know about you, but when I go to YouTube, if I see a video is 20 minutes, I'll probably look at it and think, you know what, I haven't got time to, I'd love to look at that, I haven't got time, I'll, I'll do it later. Of course, you never do, do you? If it's a two minute or a five minute video, it's, yeah, I can snack on that. Like, it's snackable content. And actually remember at the end, make sure you've got a call to action. Your call to action is contact me or my contact details are underneath or contact me here or, or put it or have it as an end card, you know, however somebody contacts you, whether it's your phone number, whether it's your email, whether it's your website, whatever it is, okay? Also, seduce people with things like eBooks, giveaways, um, any sort of lead magnet that you can offer out. Say, do you know what, guys, I actually made an eBook about this, this particular topic. Um, and it can be a short, it doesn't have to be long, but as long as you can use, you've got something, some sort of call to action, at the end of your video and at the top of your video remember to tell people stay with me because i've got a special gift for you at the end so you will maintain that sort of you know you'll maintain that uh interaction you'll maintain the engagement and that will bring your viewer hours up this is one of the things on the youtube algorithm the more views you've got great the more hours you've got even better and then you can start to get things like the coveted blue tick and all the rest of it as a verified um, uh, producer, uh, creator. So every kind of communication that you do, I really want to make sure you've got a call to action in that. OK, so it's got to be something like stay with me because at the end I've got a X, Y, Z. It's got to be free. Please don't do videos that are, or, or any other communications that are sort of are a bit of a, a cheesy upsell. You know, we've all been on those, we've all been on those webinars, haven't we, where somebody drones on about how fabulous they are. And then what they'll do is they'll give you a little bit of actionable content, and then they'll spend the next 20 minutes trying to upsell you to their course or whatever. Um, and quite honestly, it's got so old and so tired. So what I think works better, and actually other colleagues of mine, you know, various sort of mastermind groups are saying is that they're finding that if you give, 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 
then people actually genuinely respect what you do and it does position you if you've got things that you can give away it positions you as an expert because you know if you've written an ebook if you've created a download if you've created a meditation then clearly you're an expert you know it, it's this is the way the human mind works it, it's very very interesting so those are the sorts of things that i think are great to to actually utilize now Something I do want to talk about, and I'll come on to the questions and I know that we've got um, you know, various, various questions, I'll come back to those in just a sec. But while it's on my mind, something I do want to communicate, sorry, I'm just gonna have a quick sip of my, my drink. Big gulp actually, because it's going cold. So this is really important. One of the things I would love to see you doing when we're allowed to do so properly is to get out and give talks in person, because it is the strongest way after word of mouth of building your practice or building your school, okay? So if you can get yourself out in front of a targeted audience, now, you know, I always bang on about this, making sure your audience is the right audience for you by really understanding who your ideal client is now you know i've got plenty of videos if you i know we've got some new people please go and binge those videos because they are a masterclass in practice development and i don't say that lightly because they truly truly are this is information that's both evidence-based and also gleaned of, out of my 30 years of, of of supporting practitioners i've seen every permutation of practice there is so i, I know whereof i speak um, so i do know what works and i know what doesn't now what I know is if you can get in front of a highly targeted audience, let's say you are your target audience is uh, new mums for sake of argument. I know we've all got different target audiences here, but let's say your, your audience is new mums. Well, you've managed to snaffle yourself a talk at the mum and toddler group or the um, NCT National Childbirth Trust group, you know, um, and so you can get along, you go along, you make sure that your presentation is appropriate to them. Um, and it's obviously got to be something, it's not about you. Never go along, never make the mistake of going along, going along and saying, I'm going to give a talk on homeopathy, or I'm going to give a talk on aromatherapy, or I'm going to give a talk on um, acupuncture or whatever it is you do. Because quite honestly, and I hate to break this news to you, I really do. I always feel so bad about this. But you know what? Nobody actually really cares what we do. <laughs> All they care about is you're a practitioner. Does what you do actually work for me? Is what you do going to make me better? All people want is a solution to their problems and they don't care how it happens. There will be some people out there who go, do you know what? I'm really interested in, in uh, acupuncture. I might be interested in training to be an acupuncturist. And of course, they would lap up a, a, a lecture on acupuncture. But do you know what? I could not go to a mother and toddler group and give a lecture on homeopathy and the nuances of, of miasms and so on. I mean, come on, they'd just be like running for the hills, wouldn't they? It would be awful. Poor people, they wouldn't, they wouldn't stand for it. But what I might do is I might go along and say, hi everybody, um, I'm Jamie Goddard and uh, you know, I, I for, for sake of argument for this, it, this example. And um, I love to work and support new mums. And uh, I'm actually a homeopath. And I, today what I'm talking about is homeopathic first aid uh, for little ones. Um, I talk probably a little bit about how safe homeopathy is and how perhaps a little bit about, you know, the fact that you use incredibly minute doses of things. And so you don't get the toxicity of conventional meds, blah, blah, blah. And then I would launch into the practicalities. So this is how you would use it. So your little one's just fallen over and it's got a bump well obviously you'd get your arnica cream out and and, and pop that on and then you know they've got uh, they've been stung by a wasp and so you would do this and and you know so you do a little bit of homeopathic first aid for example so they're going to be going oh that's really so it's relevant they're, that's of interest to them now here's the trick okay at the end of your lecture what i want you to do is to give a few case studies. Now, those of you who've been with me on my 
uh, resilience and positive psychology training course that I've been running. And we've got, if, if you're interested in doing it, I know a lot of you are, and I know a lot of you have done it. Um, the next one is going to be coming up um, just at sort of the beginning of, of autumn. So if you want to know more about that, you can always email me. But on the resilience and positive psychology course, I teach about this because you've got people going out and doing presentations. And then at the end, what I want you to do is to give two or three relevant, relevant case studies. So you so you've talked about blah, 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 blah. OK. Um, it's all there. So they're all going, oh, actually, this is really interesting. This is useful information for me. And then at the end, you'd say, well, I want to tell you about some of the cases that I've taken. So, for example, um, I had a lady come to me. She brought her little baby along. He had really, really bad eczema, completely covered from head to toe. And um, it turned out that he'd had a problematic ventus delivery and um, they, he'd, it's, he'd had some cuts on his head. They prescribed antibiotics really high, at really high dose. Um, and so, you know, they were, they, they, they were then trying to give her, they, they, they'd actually diagnosed this baby with eczema. Um, and what had happened was that it was really clear to me that this wasn't eczema, it didn't look like eczema it actually looked like a fungal infection because of course the poor little baby had no defenses to speak of uh, not even a burgeoning innate immune system because he'd been given antibiotics as soon as he was born so what we did really super super simple is we gave him some probiotics not homeopathy at all but then i, I asked the mum to rub him with olive oil that may sound really weird but of course don't forget Olive oil is strongly antifungal. This little baby had developed a head to toe fungal infection. And she came back to me a couple of weeks later. No, not even one lesion anywhere on this little baby's body. And that baby had been tortured with antibiotics. And I understand where doctors are coming from. You know, they're, they're doing their best and they're doing with what they think. The presenting symptom is, but a little bit of intelligent thinking would have made them think actually maybe those antibiotics had a little bit to do with this. So you've got your mums, uh, that, that is actually a true story, but that did actually happen to me. So you've got your mums at that point going, wow, okay, wow, that's interesting. Give them another case study, again, relevant case study, and then say, and so, so this is what I do with people, and this is how you contact me. And um, I will guarantee you, you will get not a standing ovation, you'll get a running ovation where those mums or your target audience are run, 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 because they want your contact details. So please, 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 if you're out and you're giving talks, make sure you've got at least something that you can actually give out to people with your contact details on. Explain that you're very busy, explain that, you know, um, they, they need to get in quickly because obviously you are a busy practitioner and so on, a little bit of scarcity. I mean, if it's not true, don't say that, but a little bit of scarcity can sometimes help people think, oh, actually, yes, I must get in with this lady. Um, just explain, you know, that you are popular, that you are busy and, you know, uh, you, you know that, uh, that they do need to make an appointment, you know, to come and see you. Um, so it's all of those. So, so this is what I mean, call to action. You've got to have a call to action. So if you're interested in coming to see me, um, then, you know, this is how you get hold of me. If you're giving a presentation with a, um, with a screen behind you, then what you need to do is make sure that your contact details are up on that screen. Really, really, really important. So all the time you're talking and giving your case studies, people can actually jot down your number. OK, so or your website or whatever it is. So, uh, right, let's come back to some of the. Uh, oh, Jane has to go. That's fine, Jane. No problem at all. OK. Oh, Tony, thank you very much. So you're responding to that question. Um, so I asked where Tony was getting his most of his engagement from. Most views on Facebook, but better quality engagement from LinkedIn. That's really interesting, Tony. Could you just drop in the chat box um, what you're actually what your, your discipline is that you practice and also who your target market is? Because I think that would be really interesting to know. Uh, Sally says, I've called at least five marketing companies in the UK this week looking for help with social media. I've sat for hours trying to understand how it works and decided I could make better use of the time if I found some help. Do we know of any companies that offer startup packages that are affordable? Um, yes, actually we do. Um, bear with me one sec. 
we've got a lady who's actually a CMA member. And uh, if you can bear with me one second, I'm just gonna have a quick look uh, to see if I can find their contact details. Um, right, oh, what's going on there? My phone just decided it was gonna do bizarre things. K-E-E-L-E-Y. Ah, uh, yes, it's Hynek. Um, Hynek Associates, H-Y-N-E-K associates.co.uk. So that's Keely and her colleague, Nicole. Um, they, these ladies are brilliant. I would have a chat with them, say, say Janie sent you, have a chat with them because they are absolutely outstanding. Um, they are practitioners, uh, well, well, Keely is a practitioner. Nicole is doing her PhD in various marketing and communications things. They're very high level thinkers and they're very strategic thinkers and they can um, do social media really, really, really well. So I hope that's worth the price of admission today. Not that there is a price, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I, I, I do recommend them. They are very, very, very good. So um, yes, I hope that's useful. Um, I, I really do, Sally. I, I think that um, it's well worth chatting with them because the thing is, you do need that the problem for us in our profession is it's such a unique profession it's not like anything else out there um so you do need people who are speaking the same language and of course Keely being a practitioner herself totally gets it she knows where you're coming from and she knows what you want to achieve so I I would definitely cheat, uh, chat to Keely and Nicole they're lovely uh great okay and, and Jane says uh excellent points thank you Jane she's got to go so that's fine um okay so um We've spoken about the structure, I'm just checking the time. Um, right, okay. And uh, yes, as I say, always have a call to action at the end of any presentation that you do. And then finally, um, you know, as I say, I, I wanted to share with you my top, I'm just reading my, 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 cheat, my, my cheat notes, um, telling, which is what I was saying today. This is what we're doing today. I want to share my top tips of precisely what you need to say so that you generate response, maxi maximize the return on your time, investment of time, energy, and money. Um, yeah. So also, I would ask questions. Um, that's another thing. Um, if you have time in a presentation, I love to turn the floor over to the, the audience as well. Bear in mind that you may not get that much of, it depends on how well the group know each other. If it's a group that doesn't really know each other, you may find that people are a little bit reticent about asking questions because they're shy. Absolutely fine. Um, if it's a group that knows each other really well, then you can get the conversation going. And that really does help. And it's really exciting when you get a group like that. Women's Institute groups are notorious for being really good interactive audiences. And when you can start the Q&A sort of thing going, it really is good because you've got them, you know, sort of really, really sort of eating out of your hand. Um, I just want to come back. Um, oh, let's have a look. Oh, and Kerry Ann has offered help as well. Oh, that's wonderful. Wonderful, thank you. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, Tony says, so Kerry, is, is Kerry Ann still in the group? I'm just uh, just checking just to see. Uh, la, 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 let me see. Uh, yes, yes, Kerry Ann, that's lovely. Kerry Ann, do you do social media services? Hi, you just put your thumb up, yeah. Um, do you do social media services, Kerry Ann? Because if so, that's something else that, that people could really benefit from, because I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, let us know in the comments. Um, Tony says, ah, your title is a growth mindset coach. I'm a coach and hypnotherapist, providing solutions for individuals and groups to empower them to remove self-limitations and blocks to allow them to take control of their lives. Yay, take back control of their lives. I love that. And that's a really good, succinct way of saying things. I love it. That's a great elevator speech, actually, as they say. Um, that's absolutely super. So you're finding, so you were saying, Tony, weren't you? Um, you just check back. So most views on Facebook, better quality engagement in LinkedIn. I get that because practitioners, so, so uh, professionals mostly hang out on LinkedIn, don't they? And so I really understand why you're getting that engagement. It's all about, as I said to you earlier, everybody, where does your core audience hang out? Don't waste your time and precious effort on platforms where people, your target market is not, not hanging out because 
it's it's just a waste of you know it's, it's just soul destroying actually if I'm honest with you it's soul destroying because you put all that effort in for very little return and it's it's time consuming the other thing I would like you all if you're if you're looking at um delving into you know the dark arts of social media um is that you can get certain um distribution things uh there are various other uh, various sort of uh, tools that you can use whereby you can actually schedule your posts across different platforms there are loads I won't even start mentioning them by name because there are so many different ones but if you just go on onto Google and go social media scheduler unless anybody here uses one that they've particularly found useful um, we are, I've just actually interestingly enough for the CMA I have actually just engaged a, a, a marketing organization because we are at the stage now where we simply don't have time. We're, you know, we, we're, we've grown so much, we just don't have time. I need to be writing more courses. I need to be, um, just to give you the heads up actually everybody, just to give you a flavor of what's coming up in the not too distant future CMA wise. Um, we've got a science course for practitioners We've got a uh, oncology course, integrative oncology course for practitioners, very high level. We've got an integrative um, immunology course uh, for practitioners as well. It's nobody else, you know, we would never put up uh, practice type courses because, you know, that would compete with our college members and we don't want to do that. You know, we're here to support our college members, but we know that there is a definite glaring gap um, for practitioners where they've where you know if you've got a patient an oncology patient you've got that glaring gap where you don't necessarily have the the tools and the language to be able to communicate with that person's oncology team for example so what we're looking at doing is giving you these advanced um advanced courses they are very advanced courses but i think very necessary so we've got all of those coming up and they are um they, they're actually created um for us in conjunction with uh, Dr. Peter Kay, who is one of the world's leading um, immunologists and oncology professors, um, he's the guy who set up all of the organ transplant uh, units in Australia and New Zealand, and he's supervised as a professor so many PhD students. He's so eminent, um, and he's an incredibly wonderful man. We've also, of course, got Dr. Frank Sabatino, um, who I was uh, on with last week. You know, we were interviewing him about his success in practice, but actually he is the CMA's research and science director. So we're really, really interested in promoting uh, our members' understanding and knowledge of, of the scientific background to everything that we do that underpins our work, because I think it strengthens all of us and the profession. So, so that's a few clues as to what's coming up. Uh, right, okay, and then Carrie Ann says, oh, wow, wow, wow. Okay, so Carrie Ann says, yes, I used to be a journalist and went fully self-employed during lockdown and want to help therapists market themselves through good content and media coverage. Happy to answer questions. Oh, Carrie Ann, that's fantastic. Carrie Ann at kerryannclancy.com. I practice acupuncture, reflexology, and sports therapy. Mwah! So you are totally speaking the same language as all of us in that case. Everybody, make a beeline to Kerry Ann. Thank you so much for putting that in the group. That's brilliant. Um, and Paula says, that sounds great, Kerry Ann. Oh, that's great. Antonio says, uh, thank you so much. This is really helpful. I need to go have a lovely weekend. And thanks again. You're so welcome, Antonia. Absolutely. We're coming to the end anyway. Are there any other burning questions? Has this been useful? Have I, I, I really hope so. I only want to get online and, and chat with you if I can deliver useful content and useful sort of nuggets, hopefully of wisdom. Has this been useful for you? Let me know because, um, you know, I need to make sure that I'm not wasting your time and, and that this is, you know, actually relevant for you. So uh, do just let me know if that's actually useful. Uh, Marie has to go. That's fine, Marie. I says it's really useful. See you next time. Carrie Ann says, great session. Thank you. That's fabulous. That's great. You know, I, I sort of sit here and it's, it's kind of, a, a, you know, a bit of a one way street because I'm sort of putting content out and it's useful to hear back from you. So thank you. Oh, Paula says uh, I'll be checking out the videos as I've just done two this week oh, on your Facebook page. Brilliant. Oh, that's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, that is absolutely super. CMA members in, in closing, don't forget that um, 
you have the, um, you, well, I, I really want you to make contact with Megan, my colleague Megan at the, so T-H-E hyphen C-M-A dot org dot UK to get yourself booked in for our live one-to-one -one, um, video showcase recordings, because those go up on the CMA YouTube channel, but also on the Andrew Medical Association YouTube channel, remember, um, and also we give you a copy uh, for you to be able to use for your promotional materials as well. So it's a lovely one-to-one -one interview that I do with you. So even if you're shy, it gives you that sort of impetus because you're with somebody, a friendly, you know, friendly uh, compatriot who's sort of asking you questions and, and getting the best out of, of your interview. So remember, as a CMA member, you, you must contact Megan and get yourself booked into my diary to get that done, that bespoke um, showcase video for you. Okay, my lovelies. So that's that's actually every you know for practitioners, for college members, for retreat members, everybody. Okay, I shall love you and leave you this week. Thank you so much for being with me. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. And please keep on shining your beautiful lights out into the world because everything you do is so needed, especially more now than ever. Lots of love. Bye bye everybody. Bye bye. Thank you so much. <laughs>